But local authorities said that the father died in the explosion. Seven other people, three defendants, two police officers, a court officer, and a civilian were injured by shrapnel. All the victims were taken to a local hospital. The extent of their injuries were not immediately revealed. According to police, the unidentified man was on trial for allegedly killing another man in what happened to be, like I say, a territorial power struggle in relation to a known drug trafficking area. Uh, But you don't hear that every day. And you should see the pictures that are online about this. I first thought it happened in the States. Then I I'm looking at it and saying, oh, no, no, this has happened in the (laughs) this happened in Ukraine. But uh, he was that upset that his uh, son died. Uh, that way, this felt it was unjust. But uh, taking other lives as a result of that, that's just uh, not the way to go, unfortunately. And uh, he did die, and several other people were injured. Just a, a terrible uh, image there that just did not work out. Two, yeah, uh, two wrongs don't right, – what did they say? Right or wrong? Absolutely. I yeah, I'm I'm totally with that. This uh imagery that North Korea has propagated um through the North Korean news agency has really gotten people rather shaken up in the US and uh, elsewhere. Uh there's dozens of photographs and videos that are circulating over the internet for the launch of the Hosong fifteen missile. And uh, shows King Kim Jong Un actually launching it himself. So I don't know if that's trickery of the camera. It's a mock button, but it shows that he actually was the one that launched the ICBM missile. And so we're kind of looking at another possible launch from North Korea. And Washington-based uh, groups are looking at this. And this pragmatic uh, manner and making progress in incremental steps, Joseph Bermutes from 38 North, a Washington-based North Korean monitoring project who I'm talking about, uh, notes that they are so close of launching a nuke weapon that we should all be on alert right now and not to allow this to happen and military action is needed. That's the advice that's given to the president as we speak. There was a Security Council meeting that was yesterday. The options that were on the table are options now that are being implemented. And unless something changes differently, folks, we are so close. It would seem that uh, North Korea has just pretty much solidified a war. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff spokesperson Joe J. Chan cautioned that more analysis is needed to determine, that's what they're saying here, that the uh, Hawsong 15's full performance, but said North Korea has clearly made significant changes since the Hawsong 14. Our initial analysis of the photos show that there were clear differences between the Hawsong 15 and the Hawsong 14 in terms of the looks of the warhead, the joint of the first and second stages of the missile in overall size. North Korea said that the new missiles soared in an altitude of 4,475 kilometers, which is 2,780 miles, more than 10 times the height of the International Space Station, higher and longer than any North Korean missile before landing in the sea near Japan. The missile large enough was immediately apparent in the photos, which analysts said could provide uh, more information, but uh, it provided a more powerful propulsion system. And like I said on my first hour, many people are looking for engineering from Russia, from Iran, from China. Who is helping them? Whose plans are they? And why are they still helping them? And a lot of people are really looking at China and Russia right now, very, very upset, not to mention Iran, but those two seem to be a little bit stronger on ones helping them reach these feats. But these photos are very disturbing for anybody that has a beating heart that looks at this, and especially if you have loved ones that are in the that region. My brother lives in Japan. He, uh, he teaches English over there. And 
He's been over there for several years. He's got a lot of friends and a lot of great people. A lot of Americans actually live in Japan or that general area or obviously our military. We've got over 250,000 troops at the DMZ. They are in uh, South Korea. A lot of business owners that are American that are in South Korea. And, I mean, they're a stone throw away. You've, you've heard of it. So this has got to be very disheartening uh, to see this because, we, we, you know, there was the lull. And a lot of people are saying that was the calm before the storm, that there's a lot more like this right behind it. And they'll, they'll, they'll constantly to prove that they can do it faster bigger, brighter. And I've mentioned this to a few friends the other day about this this whole deal. What if they launch more than one? One's freaky enough, but what if they one goes this way, one goes that way, one goes the other way? What do they do three? Why not? I mean, would that not be extra, extra provocative? You know, there's pundits that said, you know, we should just shoot them down. Well, we've been talking about shooting them down. How many times, how many more missiles have to be coming out of there, landing in Japan, over Japan? Shoot them on the launching pad. Take them out. we got ships out there that can do that. Shoot these things out of there. Send them a strong message. We're going to destroy you if you keep, keep this up. This guy's not quitting, so we need to send a – and I can't think of anything better than American prowess and might to those silos, specifically surgical strikes, surgical strikes like we did in Syria. I, I, I don't see any other way to shut this guy up. Destroy him before they even get off the ground. Take him out. Destroy what they have right now. Say, if you go any further, any more. Because if it's true that we're not trying to, and we've told the UN regime that we're not wanting to change the government or anything like that, we just want to shut down your nuclear ambition, then let's just make it about that. We, we, we have the satellite imagery. We know where these places are. We know where they're launching. I mean, believe me, these spy satellites they just sent up recently, there are more of them, and they're aimed, where do you think? Uh, they can see a pin. Yeah, they're very, very super accurate. So they can see this. They, there's so much intelligence, not even funny. They know what's going on. Anyway, we're monitoring it, and uh, the Rocket Man thing, uh, there was a speech about taxes, and I guess the Rocket Man uh, was mentioned again. But uh, yeah, just saying what a scoundrel the guy is. President Trump... Uh, says that the massive tax plan rolled out by the Republicans is a winner and slammed the New York Times as a lobbyist. And I really like how he says this because really that's what it is. I like Trump. I like he calls it for what it is. He, he says the New York Times as a lobbyist for the Democrats and up, appointments of the bill, opponents of the bill. <laughs> that's all, folks. The, uh, the failing New York Times, the pipe organ, of the Democratic Party has become a virtual lobbyist for them with regards of our massive tax cut bill. They are wrong so often that now I know we have a winner, Trump tweeted early Thursday morning. So there you go. Failing, we should read that one more time. The failing at New York Times, the pipe organ for the Democratic Party, has become a virtual lobbyist for them with regard to our massive tax cut bill. They are wrong so often that now I know we have a winner. Well, we're hoping there's people, uh, several to the right, that really are not very, very happy about it. Uh, President's tweets was a double whammy, reuniting his uh, fake news and the mainstream media by criticizing the Gray Lottie's editorial decisions and slamming the Democrats for not working together to push tax reform. But they didn't show up at the White House, so what is a president to do? Uh, old Mitch, right next to the president, saying, whenever Obama invited me to the White House, I was there. Even if I didn't agree with what he was, I was there. Because, because he valued and had respect for the office. He may not have agreed with everything that the president does. Mitch McConnell doesn't agree with everything the president says and does. But he's there to listen, and he's there to learn and to offer his input, and the president respects that. 
He tried to lean into the left, and the left is just showing their ass like they wouldn't believe. And there's a reason why I think that the left is really sh- they've chosen the donkey for so many years. Because really, they have shown their ass again and again and again. And it's all part of what they're calling the resistance. The resistance. Divide America. That This is the way they're going to do it. And, and believe me, they were working really hard during the Obama administration to do the same thing. To divide America, polarize America, play the race game, even though they had an African-American or, you know, in the White House, a Kenyan, a Kenyan uh, president. They uh, still exploited it, still played the game, and still do the same exact thing for minorities. They do so much injustice to them, and they bait them. They don't realize they're being used. They, they just don't get it. Some do. Many don't. I feel your pain. And they believe it. They don't benefit, but they believe it. And they just get a lot of jargon out of Washington and nothing happens for them for their party. What good have they done for their communities except riddle them with more crime, more drugs, and more criminals and more deaths occur in these left cities, leftist cities that run it. Look at Baltimore, Maryland. Look at San Francisco. Look at Chicago. I mean, we could go on and on, but just three major right there. I mean, it says everything. Heather Graham says that she was so frustrated by the sexism in Hollywood and the dearth of female uh, perspectives on on screen uh, that really minimized uh, and downplayed people like Harvey Weinstein about his harassment, that she's going to put out her own movie, her own story. Heather Heather Graham, the actress, she's going to tell her story. And she thought that showing her experience on screen, more or less, would be the only way to be heard in a system that favored the powerful and silenced the powerless. But that was before the flood of sexual misconduct allegations surfaced against Harvey Weinstein and other Hollywood power players. Heather Graham turning her Harvey Weinstein harassment story into a movie coming to a screen near you. When there's release dates, we'll let you know about it. But uh, and it's it's good. Uh, people need to see this stuff. They need to understand what a cesspool Hollywood's been. And it's still, believe me, there's there's a lot more purging that has to be done. There's so many more executives, so many big power players over there, people that have more money they know what to do with. They do this stuff day in and day out in Hollywood. Still, Lewin, still the worst of the worst pond scum. Uh, that live up there, that do that kind of stuff. It's it's terrible. Uh, you would think this would be Wednesday's story. We did the, the uh, grenade. <laughs> uh, but uh, here's an Australian electrician, uh, clever guy. He used potato chips, uh, a, a bag to skip work for years. He's been fired. They, they busted this guy. And basically uh, how, how they did You know, a lot of companies are using GPS to monitor, you know, their trucks or their whereabouts with phones and stuff like that. According to Yahoo News Australia, a 60-year-old Tom Corlila was a senior union delegate and had worked as an electrician for the same company for nearly 20 years. Then one day, his employers got an anonymous tip, uh uh-oh, saying that he had actually been playing golf while he was supposed to be at work at least 140 times during the past two years. Somehow nobody had noticed his absence. Like other employees at his company, Lola had a personal digital assistance that tracked him and assigned him a uh, completed job task and also had a GPS that monitored his location. So basically what he did is he hid his PDA in an empty foil potato chip bag and sealed it up, which blocked the GPS signal and hid his location from his employers. A potato chip bag. <laughs> uh, yeah, he busted it. Do you know anybody in your workplace that did that? That was in Austria. Somebody said, now consider a group of baboons. Baboons are the loudest, most dangerous, most obnoxious, most viciously aggressive, and least intelligent of all primates. 
what is the proper collect 